Dr. Cindy Asby Jornsson's work focuses on the health of our veins and how our blood travels through those veins. She is the founder of the Vein Healthcare Center in South Portland, and many of her patients have to deal with blood clots. So are we all at risk for blood clots? Possibly, but some people are more at risk than others. 207's Peggy Kaiser sat down with her to learn more. So this is Blood Clot Awareness Month. Not something we think about all that much, but let's start off with what exactly is a blood clot and why is it dangerous to us? So a blood clot is any time the blood is sitting still, it can kind of stick together. And a clot is just a group of cells that have stuck together and they usually adhere to the wall of a vessel. In and of themselves, not dangerous, sometimes uncomfortable, but what happens in our leg veins is pressure can build behind them if a clot were to form in a vessel, and then it can break off, or part of it can break off. Mm. And when a vein clot breaks off, then it travels and it becomes what we call an embolism. And the embolism part, or the moving clot, is what's dangerous because it can move into our lungs and be a pulmonary embolism, or it can come up to our brain and be a stroke. Are some people more at risk for a clot than others? The big part of preventing clots is to know your risks and to be aware of them and to react to them. So the big groups of people who tend to be at risk are people who aren't as mobile as we'd like to think they should be, people who have underlying problems that make their blood sticky, and lastly, people who have had some kind of damage to a, a vessel wall. Medically speaking, we call it a hypercoagulable state. And there are two big groups of hypercoagulable states, the kind we're born with, and some people just have them for all of their life, and then the kind that we pick up along the way, or the acquired kind. Those tend to be the, the more dangerous ones because they can be a little sneaky and people don't always know they have them. So cancer, for example, if someone has a cancer that's yet to be diagnosed, sometimes the first sign they'll have it is a blood clot. Interesting. Um, sometimes conditions, classic conditions like pregnancy, will make us hypercoagulable. So oftentimes when someone first becomes pregnant, their OB doctor can have a talk with them about things they can do for their next nine months plus a few months postpartum to protect themselves from having clotting issues. How would I know if I was potentially having a blood clot? What would I feel? Sometimes blood clots give us symptoms. Sometimes they don't. Okay. So when you have symptoms, oftentimes an unexplained bout of swelling, redness, pain, tenderness, a different kind of pain that's undescribable is always worth getting checked out. How do you treat this and how do you make some lifestyle changes to hopefully not get another one? The important thing is finding it early. Yeah. because if left untreated, it will grow and grow, and that's when things tend to get dangerous. So getting diagnosed early, and then oftentimes it's just being on a medicine for a short period of time. Sometimes it's an extended period of time. Sometimes it becomes a lifelong medicine, but that first diagnosis will dictate a lot of the next steps. Every now and then, we actually have to do medical procedures where the clots are broken up or even removed, but usually it's just a medical process, so medicine is the answer. A sedentary lifestyle kind of being a baseline for being concerned. Mm -hmm. So if, if that happens to be the type of lifestyle you have, if you have the option of maybe being less sedentary, that's not a bad thing to be thinking about. Moving is a great way to prevent clots. And even if you are stuck in a chair, say for long meetings or um, just your work in general, tapping your toes, tapping your heels, any kind of movement is good movement. Ideally, people get up and walk every hour or so. Mm -hmm. I oftentimes encourage hydration because if you're well hydrated, you'll have to get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so it kind of has a double positive there. What's the most important piece of information for us to think about if we are sailing on through our days on this month in particular with blood clot awareness. So pay attention. Pay attention to your health. Listen to your body. If something's different, get it checked out. If you're going in for a surgery or even a simple office procedure, talk to your providers, talk to your team of folks taking care of you about your risks and about what you can do specifically for your situation to stay healthy through all of it. 
While there are both major and minor risks that contribute to blood clots, Dr. Asbjornsson says it's usually a perfect storm of events that lead to an actual blood clot. Just head on over to the 207 section of our website if you'd like to learn more.